Welcome to AS Fishing TV. We're here today to have a little look about some of the tackle that I carry around. One of the most frequent questions I get asked on social media, on the bank, when I'm out coaching, is the kind of stuff I take with me and why. So let's have a little look. God knows what we're going to find. Uh, some of the stuff I carry around with me. So we'll start with the top of my seat box. It's all pretty straightforward stuff and there'll be things in here and I'm sure you'll be the same at home as well. Stuff that you use quite a lot and there's some stuff you find and you think, do you know what, that's been in there for 10 years and I've never used it once. So hook lengths, nice and accessible for me, just in the top under my seat, use that a lot. A few bits of spare elastic, um, which sounds daft, but when I'm um, using like hookups on my pole and things like that, obviously the elastic that's in, it, that's in the sun, it erodes quite quickly. So I am often just tie a little fresh loop out of some old cutoffs of elastic and that, that solves that problem for me. Um, electrical tape, because you just never know. Um, I've got a few spare um, pole nose bungs. Have a little look at it, Stuart Jolly, absolute legend of a guy. Um, great product. Um, yep, yeah, tape I've done. And bits and bobs really, that's an important one. A tea light candle, so I use that for waxing the joints of my pole, as you can see by the the lip on it, um, which is fantastic for maintaining your pole. You can see a separate video on that on the channel. Spare a uh, little rod rest, just, just in case you like, drop one in the water or anything like that. And then just little like nuts and bolts, little spares, parts for the seat box really. So again, pretty, pretty straightforward. Some stuff I use a lot, some stuff that's never moved since it's been in there. Next, under the next section, it's like my second rig tray, really. So the ever important um, rod license, of course, don't go fishing without it. Um, memberships, to different places and things like that. Um, spare floats. So I'm really, really fortunate to be uh, uh, involved with a different, different pole float companies. You can have a little look at that. So there's a few spares that are untied there. Um, and then a few other bits and, and bobs, really. Like these are my, my sort of reserve rigs essentially ones that I sometimes might use just in case um, obviously my pallet waggler's there which you've again you might have seen a feature on recently um, so they're still in there as well from that uh, a couple of spare winders a few shallow rigs that kind of thing really just just the, the spare ones I should be careful as we shut that so into the trays now so these are the rigs I tend to use the most or the area where I store the rigs that I'm going to use for a specific thing, so filming a feature, fishing a match, particular pleasure session, whatever it might be. So as you can see there, um, quite quite array. Um, a few few different floats from different people there. Um, quite a few handmade ones actually. Again, you can look in the description below in the video to see who some of these are made by. There's a few prototypes in there as well, which are fantastic to be involved in. Um, and then there's some from people like Nick Gilbert, who's been making floats for, for quite a long time. Um, like this one on the end here but generally speaking it's a typical commercial day lots of f1 and um, stuff there a few margin rigs as well a bit of versatility a few shallow rigs um things like that a lot of my shallow rigs actually are currently attached to my top kits in my bag so they're, they're not actually stored there they, i could just do it direct on there so again you know the kind of thing that you usually find wire stems we've got steel stems we've got glass stems um different you know, different thicknesses of tips, loads of versatility, something for everything, basically. So the next tray down, it's kind of the tool tray, I suppose. Some bits in here I haven't used for ages. So a couple of pair of scissors. I've got spares of practically everything. So again, if you like, if you're like me, dropping stuff in the water by mistake or it drops through the cracks of the, of the landing stage. So I've, I tend to get spares, really. A couple of um, different colours of Electrical tape, um, I used to mark my top kits for depth, but now now I don't use them anymore. Um, I've got top kits that have got depth, mar depth markers on them, so don't tend to use that, but they're still there. You know, you just never know. Uh, like I said, I mentioned scissors, nail clippers, um, really good for um, just tying the, when you're tying your hook lens and things like that, you don't want a big line sticking out at the end. You just want to make sure you cut it off nice and close to the knot. So I tend to use them from that. And then the usual stuff, disgorges, slamos, loop tires uh two different sizes of loop tires actually again you can see my videos from the tackle room some of the stuff that i use um quick stop needle i love these fantastic little diamond eye threader from matrix you can see 
what a brilliant little tool for doing things like elastics and dacrons and side puller beads all sorts of stuff really really useful thread punches different shapes and sizes little drill bait hook um what else have we got in here so pole pots loads of different ones we've got some from certain companies again you've seen these on a video the matrix pole pots and the accessories um we've got some Preston innovations ones as well there again really quite useful and some homemade ones um if i just want to use a tiny little piece of bait some plummets again same as anybody else in here i haven't used this for ages so i can't even remember so these are just a few bits and bobs a couple of spare hooks which to be fair can be thrown away um and some um some bomb bomb and ledger bits and bobs really uh, again don't don't tend to use them anymore there's some guru ones there but and that's it really um i should invest in a tackle tidy tray but i haven't done i use these which are homemade keeps everything nice and, and steady so that's there i'll stop that away what else have we got so uh under here we'll do the top first so as you can see it's my lines and my most used elastics essentially um so i'll talk a little bit about this um map uh, really really good products i really about like using these products um we've got a bit of a variety really i've got o11 there which i tend to use for hook lengths and o13 mainly for hook lengths as well um rig line for pole o17 i use for pretty much everything to be honest uh, really use loads loads and loads and loads of it um even for even for bigger fish you know up to kind of double figures um, it as long as you're careful with it you've got a side puller kit and your tackle is well balanced you can use that for pretty much everything for pole rigs um, otherwise it can get a little bit uh, tangle-ish really um, so that's really really good and then I've got an 019 which I tend to use for pole rigs down the margin as well um, I do sometimes use the 017 for um, hook lengths for the method feeder as well um, just so you've got that durability and something that is going to be able to take the, the kind of hammering it gets when you're catching these fish on commercial fisheries. Real line in four, five and six pound in old money, um, 016 to, to 02. Um, again, perfect really. I tend to use the, the 016 for float fishing quite a lot. Um, sometimes with pellet waggler as well. From pellet waggler for F1s up to about two or three pound, it's perfect. It just casts really, really easy, which is fantastic. And then the 018 and the 020 tend to use for feeder fishing. Uh, most commercials, I'll go with the 018. Um, it's a little bit lighter than some people use, um, but it's nice and durable, brilliant, brilliant product, and it's just never failed me. This one, the 020, I'll tend to go to if it's double bigger fisher chuck, so bigger, bigger venues or places like Cudmore Arena. Um, where there's nothing under sort of five pound in there. So um, it just means that it, it, you've got that, it's that extra durability when I'm using that kind of product. Um, the elastics I've got in here are uh, the TKS Solid Hybrid from, from MAP. They're absolutely brilliant. I've got eight to 10, 10 to 12, 14 to 16. So I've got spare in here because this is the, the, the ones I tend to use for most of my commercial fishing and match fishing. The O10 is absolutely perfect for silverfish and F1s up to about two pounds. Then stepping it up a little bit, um, quality silverfish and um, F1s two pound plus and real carp. Um, again, just, just gives you that versatility. I tend to use this a lot, to be fair, really, really good product. And then for down the edge, um, I want something that is soft, but when you're catching big fish, you know, 10 pound, 15 pound, um, I've had fish up to 19 and a half pound on this elastic, so it never lets me down again and it's perfect for in the edge. It means that it can come out of the swim when it's hooked, but then you've got the fish really under control really, really quickly, which is fantastic. So again, they're my three sort of go-tos really. And the other stuff in here is just things that don't fit anywhere else. So the, the old, <laughs> the old, I never use these now. This is for my son really. So these are the old um, puller bungs that you used to have in the top, in your top kits. Um, you, you screw it in and make sure you can pull them out again. Don't use them anymore. Uh, that's in there. Nice long waggler float. Um, simply because it's too long to fit anywhere else. So <laughs> that's why it's in there. And then a little bit of spare catapult elastic, I think that is. Yeah, so there's two bits of that in there as well. Just in case you snap your catapult when you're in the middle of a session or in the middle of a match. So that's that. That's that box. Let's have a look in the trays so in here 
Okay, it's mainly the shot and the weights that I use. Um, so there's lots of stots, Preston Innovations ones, for different sizes, and a few extra bits. I've got normal shot as well. Obviously quite small there, number eight, number 10, even got number 12s and number 13s there, which are fantastic in the winter, you know, for your really delicate pole rigs, or when I'm fishing canals and things like that, really, really ideal. Um, pencil, because you never leave the bank without one. Pair of pliers, actually two pairs of pliers, which I forgot were in there, just in case. There's so many just in cases. Uh, we've got some Olivets there, just for those big natural deep waters. Uh, with pole rigs and um, squeezing the stots on the line the good old sharpie if you haven't got one of these in your tackle box you should have great for blacking out a, a pole float if you can't see it if you're fishing against white water the red or the green doesn't show up you can just color it in black and it stands out really really well another set of nail clippers same as before like i said i tend to have about 400 spares of everything that's in there uh, another spare uh, hand wheel for the seat box just in case lots of just in cases i can't get it back in there we go so that's that one in this drawer if i can pull it out so again loads of stuff here um these are the map elastics i don't always use so the sizes are not used as much so the, the lightest in the range four to six and six to eight perfect for canals the four to six six to eight um, they tend to like to use on commercials actually, but in the winter, especially if it's been frozen over or something like that, something really, really soft. And then we've got some that are a little bit stronger um, and, and they do stronger than that as well. There's an 18 to 20 within the range, but I don't, I don't use it very often, so I don't carry it in my seat box. Um, it would be the kind of thing that I would take out with me specifically if I was, you know, going for, for silly sized car down the margins, for example. And then here is practically every piece of map terminal tackle you can find we've got waggler link swivels in there there's normal link there's rolling swivels there's line stops uh there's a bit of everything in here to be fair all the different sizes diamondized swivels all that kind of stuff okay so there's again there's, there's one of everything in there um and that's all i bring out with me really anything that i've got additional to that is at home and just keep it stocked up Slide that back in. So this is the more of a feeder kind of tray. Like, a, like all of your loads of things in there. The old, old style methods used to get these in the, the bags of ground bait from Preston Innovations. And it's the kind of thing you always end up keeping. Um, ICS range there. You've seen a feature on that before as well if you've watched some of my videos. Um, look at that one. I've not used that for forever. Just for putting a few little pellets in for fishing the, um, the bomb. Really, really good in the depths of winter. Again, ICS range there from Preston, some of the bombs that they've got. A couple of moulds. Guru feeders, use these a lot. Really like the lip on these. Um, they're fantastic, really. Um, can be really useful. Don't like them too big. I've got some bigger ones at home, but again, don't tend to always use them. So that one, um, it sinks really, really slowly. So you can just attach it via a feeder link. And it just means you can fish like a a bit like a pellet waggler, but it'll search the depths of the water all the way through. Um, and it just acts as a, as a bolt rig, essentially. It's just a um, a widget, if you like, that are filled full of water and then glued shut. So it's almost got zero buoyancy. So the pellet, the weight of the pellet and the line, just enough to make it sink really slow. Some old style bombs in there, just for really, really light fishing. Loads of stems, quick change beads. Um, and then just like maggot feeders and ground bait feeders really just again just for that change stuff that i use in the depths of the winter like really tiny ones that are nice and light so there's barely any splash when it enters the water um just nice and, and sneaky really and some uh, pellet cone molds actual ones that i bought there from guru oh and a banjo feeder look at that that was hiding in there i don't see why not not use that for ages so the old style banjo feeder which seems to have gone out of fashion a bit now but like i said you just end up keeping these things in your box it's a bit daft really so we'll look one more tray to go on here what we got in here so a bit of a mixture of things a bit of wagglers so we've got some waggler adapters there from guru a couple of different pallet waggler floats from different companies so you've seen the ones in the box already there's um ooh, garble you know one here in my hand quite like that because it's quite, it's quite long actually it's really good for casting the distance 
then the Preston Innovations one there with multiple tips and the flights on. Just a more of a traditional crystal waggler there. That's a Drennan one. Again, not used it for donkey years. Um, in here, got boxes in boxes. I'm sure yours is like this as well. I have a little comment in the link below actually if you carry some crazy things in your box that you've not seen for ages. So some more pallet wagglers that are a bit bigger for you know bigger natural waters really, things like reservoirs and things like that. Uh, just a normal pallet waggler from Preston. Really good for silver fish. And then I've got like these are these are pole nose. Uh, no, sorry, in uh, pole elastic bungs that I've chopped the end off. Um, and they're really really good for pellet cone fishing. So these were the homemade ones before I bought the guru ones. And then these are um imitation baits, so pop-ups essentially, some corn ones and then some different colours of barrels. Um, again, sometimes really good on big natural waters, but don't use them very often. That's that. And then in here, so this is other, oh, open it the right way around. Some other wagglers, some old wagglers. So some crystal ones. I don't think these have been opened since I've had this seat box, if I'm honest. Um, and this one we're going to put to use this summer. This one should be some stick floats for river fishing. One or two wagglers in there, but some stick floats as well. So can't wait to get on to the River Weaver, the River Dane, hopefully the River Seven. And we'll get some of these out and we'll talk you through a little bit of stick float fishing on the river and trotting trotting the bait through. So that'd be quite good. So that's that's it for the seat box. That's all I carry in my seat box. Probably similar to a lot of you. Nothing terribly surprising in there, I don't think. But again, if you think there's something in there, you think why or what you use that for, drop a comment in the bits below. So what else do I carry with me? Um, coming to here, another box within a box, within a box, within a box. Spare catapult and spare catapult elastic in there. This is a hook lens that I use for feeder fishing. So it's just a bit longer rather than the other one you've seen. Um, skid bung for my pole, pole cup, uh, there are pole silicon float elastics and some spare eyes and things like that in there for pole floats in case you have to re-glue them back in. In here is hooks I think, you can tell how much you use it, Jorah bands, bait bands, yeah and, and some hooks, they tend to be the ones that in here that I'm not using at the moment so cameras and B911s, great pattern for the winter. Don't tend to use them at this time of year, which is why they're in here. I've got to get it back in now. There we go. And then this will be full of loads of stuff that I don't use very often. So it's stuff that is like spare, really. Some Drenum feeder beads in two different sizes. You'll see um, from my videos, when I'm sometimes I'm shallow fishing, I tie the rig directly to the elastic, and then I cover the knot up with the feeder beads. So that's why I've got them there in two different sizes. Uh, what have we got there? Quick link adapters from Guru. Some more black tape. I've got loads of tape. And then like swivels and things like that. Some Again, some pole pots and some accessories. More homemade ones. Bits of daiquirins and um, old daiquirins and side pullers and things like that. Um, yeah, all bits and bobs really. Stuff, stuff I don't use like that, for example. That's... They are, uh, God, I never see, oh, never see these anymore. So you'll drop one already. Good job, we don't use it. So these are the external pole top kit bushes, um, which hardly ever used. Nearly dropped it again. Um, this is probably the thing I use most. I use this for my own Dacrons. Um, absolutely brilliant. So I use that, carry that around loads just in case I need to tie another one. Hello, Mr. Dragonfly. Uh, and then the... Uh, Time nice weather if you're doing your top kits, spare spare bits and bobs, just yeah, bait bands, all that stuff that you don't need to carry but you do carry. Which is bonkers, isn't it? So that's what's in there. Now I've got to try and put it put put it all away again. So going into here, main compartment first. Let's have a look. All the things that you would expect, really. So, accessories, roosts, all that kind of stuff. Seat box accessories. 
basically. Um, riddle, obviously don't leave, don't leave the bank without one. That's just a simple four mil riddle, brilliant for keeping your maggots fresh. Um, just a, that's ideal actually, what have I got in there? This is really good for keeping your, your soaked pellets dry when it's as hot like it is today. A weighing in sack. Um, don't use it for weighing in if I'm honest anymore, but what, it, what it's really good for is just wetting it and lying it on the ground so that if you're taking photographs of fish, you can keep them nice and safe. They're not gonna get damaged and it's nice and cold and wet as well. So really important thing there, um, which seems insignificant, but it isn't. Fish safety, obviously it's always gonna come first. Uh, and then I've got like bait pump. Uh, don't use it very much anymore. Um, some spare bait boxes, some reels. Um, and that's basically it, essentially. One or two seat box accessories. Again, that sometimes I use in matches or pleasure fishing. Um, side pouches. Now I've taken my dinner out. So on there I've got some spools of line actually. They are um, some, some bigger um, hook lengths for feeder fishing. So again, these are, these are homemade rather than buying some of the ones that you get from products companies tend to make my own and in here so this is other elastics all different ones in there different shapes and sizes another diamond eye threader okay some some elastic that's prototype i can't talk about that yet and um, different bits and bobs in there that's about it for that side and then in here we're almost last but not least just, again, a few more bait bits that I carry with me. A couple of pop-ups, um, you know, like fake maggots and things like that. Just just if you, you know, you're struggling to catch and you want to try a few different things. And obviously some of the Burt Baits products, you know all about these already. So brilliant, brilliant products. Have a little look on the website. So I'll keep them in there. And then a few more in the base of it. Just the soft hookers, just to carry them, just in case. Don't really use them that much this time of year, but you just never know. And that's it. So other than like, the stuff that I normally carry around with me, you know, like side trays and my rods and all that kind of stuff, um, that's, that's the terminal tackle that I carry around in my box. It'd be really interesting to see what you've got in yours. Like I said, comment in the links below. Even take a couple of pictures if you want to. You can add them on there as well. It'd be really interesting to see it. And it's the kind of thing that we can discuss maybe on a future live Q&A online which would be fantastic so there we go hopefully that's answered your questions this has been as fishing tv and i will see you on the bank soon